All right. What's the best way to get this uh, process started? Do we just like go around and just start telling stories? I think you throw out the really, uh, the really canned like, man, guys, can you believe it's been ten years already? Oh God, <laughs> that's really cheese. <laughs> oh, well, it's gotta have some sort of. Uh... I'll never forget how the church planning training began. We were leaving Chicago. I'm in the moving truck, and. I am so happy because I see the sign that you are now leaving Sandwich, Illinois, and my phone rings, and it's Laura, and she tells me that, Craig, you won't believe it, I pulled up the corner of carpet in the house, and there's hardwood underneath. Uh, and then I kept pulling, I and then I kept pulling, and I kept pulling, and she pulled out the entire second level of our house carpet. And so for us, the very first month journey of the church was me refinishing hardwood floors and pulling nails. I remember, wasn't there a, wasn't there a significant weather event that also happened that month? Was like the, one of the most intense snowstorms that we've had in like 10 years where oh, we yeah. had like 28 inches. We moved into the house yeah, in the middle of the storm. Yeah. We had like a bunch of cardboard boxes in our front yard. I remember that. It's fun. We missed that entirely because so we moved from Illinois exactly a month after you guys did. When we get back at your house projects, like pretty much done and moving and we missed the snowstorm. It's like, hey, sweet, it's April, it's springtime, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Good to be back in Kansas City. I remember your promo to have like the church being started and it was you in front of the brick wall. It was like your brick wall vision video. But that was the first time because I hadn't seen you like pre I hadn't seen you like preach in a long time because I knew Laura and you guys and we were all out of town and all of a sudden it was just like, oh, there's Greg and he has a vision for the city. And he's communicating it clearly. I know. Like, who is this person? Honestly, Craig, Jess and I were kinda of in that place too, because you know we've been friends for so long and you guys were living in Sandwich, about an hour south of us, when we were in Rockford, and you asked us to be a part of the church. And Jess and I, let's go. Can Craig preach? That's what I said. Like, I don't what, remember what I asked. I never heard you preach before. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, literally, Tanya yeah. said, Can I need you to send me YouTube clips of you preaching <laughs> in order for us to even consider moving to Kansas City? And I was like, Oh man. <laughs> This is like a job interview. Our friend Tiffany, every time she comes to town, she's like, I just can't believe he can preach. Like, I just never knew. Yeah. Carrie and I watched that promo video before we came to church of Four Corners. Someone invited us, we watched it, and we were, were, you, were you a cardigan? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, ah, I don't know. Because <laughs> uh, it was so young. Uh, you know, it was young. Uh, How old were you? 20. I was 29 when I shot that. Yeah. yeah. But we came anyway. It was awesome. We were welcomed right away by someone named Ryan and Wright. Yes. Right, right. And then she welcomed us and then she went straight on stage to sing because Jessica wasn't singing that day. And then when we left, she said goodbye to us. It was like she had to do everything. She, was she did do a lot of stuff. She yeah. was our first finance person. She was. Which was. Fun, fun, oh, she was a finance. Yeah. She did well, all of our QuickBooks. When you first started up uh, with worship, was there was it a full band with worship? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, because Craig played drums for like the first. Oh, at least I do year. remember yeah. that. Yeah, that's right. This was a typical yeah. Sunday: show up, unload, and then practice. Then I would run away for like thirty minutes and try to like cram my notes into my brain. Mm -hmm. Then we would like do opening song, and I would run out and be like, "Hey, everyone, welcome to church." <laughs> Say hello to someone next to you, just so I could run back, play three more songs, inevitably oceans. Yeah. The women yeah. would start crying, and then <laughs> like, so run back out and preach. We got it. It's a good Many thing. Be like, you know Jeremy, Jeremy cried. Run back. At least Jeremy time. cried. Oh yeah, I cried anytime. <laughs> yes, I cried many times during the worship song. And then a drummer like showed up, and I started crying. Oh, <laughs> I had tears of joy. Yes. yes, there you go. Uh, yeah. Do you remember when we were portable? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh I've, distant memory. We were oppressed. I regret suppressed it, yeah. We I, used to accomplish so much so early in the morning. So true. It was the most productive season of my life. Mm -hmm. So what time did the <laughs> team have to get there to set everything up? 
get there at like 6.30 a.m. to load up the trailers and then we would get to Truman at 7 because oh, the doors okay. would unlock at 7 a.m. And then we would have our first service at 9.30. And so we had two hours to set everything up, have everything ready, all the huddles, all the practices, all the stuff. Uh, and solve all of the problems that we would inevitably show up. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's an orchestra pit in front of the stage. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a mm -hmm. boat on yeah, the stage. A soul yeah. and a ship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh we trip. can't even use the stage today. We just have to be in front, like oh, the, the four curtains. foot of the stage in front of the curtains. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, this is fun. Oh, we're not going to have a screen today. Oh, we don't have lights today. Oh, Didn't we just have, have to break into the storage unit? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So that's, that's what I was thinking when you mentioned Ryan earlier. We were sitting, it was, uh, it was the first year. Um, it actually was one of the most, I think, important moments in the life of our church. Uh, it was a thing where God turned something around that was gonna be a really big problem and made it really amazing. So December 20th of 2013, so it's our first Christmas uh, as a church, and we're sitting, uh, Jess, myself, uh, Ryan and Wright, and our two kids, at Buffalo Wild Wings, uh, just catching dinner on a Saturday night. We were watching the weather and there was an ice storm coming in. And we're like, okay, this could be problematic. Should we go get the trailers tonight? So we have them out of the storage unit, all that stuff. And, uh, and then we found out that we couldn't even get into the storage unit. And then it was so frozen and iced up, we couldn't even have, so this is actually a different time than when we had to break in, but we couldn't even have, we couldn't get in to get our, our trailers out at all. And so we had to like on the fly impromptu cancel our Sunday morning service. That was going to be our Christmas theme service. Did we cancel? And yes. We, I feel but, like there was but never we, a reason that we would ever like, we just like, it was, there was so much grit. Yeah. We even like jumped so walls what, and vaults. And wait, why so couldn't we get into the storage unit? We couldn't get in because the, they were very particular about like the ice and driving around and liability stuff. And then the school district also wouldn't let us come in on Sunday morning either because of the ice and the situation too. So what we did was we talked to the school district that night and they agreed to let us come in on Christmas Eve. And that turned into our first ever Christmas Eve service where 300 people showed up. Mm -hmm. it, we were like the infamous. It was, a, it was a whole thing. It was kind of infamous at one point. Um, but it was, it was infamous in in infamous because it was like this moment where it built us a lot of momentum because yeah. we had a ton of people coming to check us out for the first time a ton of people that were there and lots of things went wrong and were different than what they were supposed to be in that service but um, yeah <laughs> then there was there was the other time we had to break in because the the storage people were being stingy as well and so michael jones who was uh, a, a really important part of our story he uh, he showed up and scaled the wall of the storage <laughs> place because he couldn't get into the building or because the gate wouldn't open up, but you could get out because it was like motion sensor. So he scaled the wall, uh, went around and triggered the motion sensors. They could drive the truck in and then drove in and drove them out. But the, the walls, I mean, it's like probably a 10 or 12 foot high wall of like, just, I don't even know how he got up oh. it. Like, I'm, like assuming he was like, I'm assuming wow. he had like some nice, like mountain climbing, yeah. like hooks and <laughs> pythons on his feet. Uh, and then just like, probably like a, a light on his head, I think, to scale the wall. I remember but. seeing the guys use uh, below torches. Below yeah. torches? Yeah, they Not had below torches. torches. Yeah. Below. <laughs> They, they, they used the, they used the blow torches yeah, the below the locks. Oh. Yeah, they were below <laughs> torching the yeah. locks. It was it's it was frozen. apostrophe low torches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had to store a lot of our items in kids' area, not in the trailers. Like then we have frozen wipes, frozen cleaners. Oh, frozen wipes! Frozen yeah. wipes are a really big deal. Yes. So we would have to take in the winter. Yep. Someone had to choose to take to all up. of the wipes home. <laughs> Yeah, so they the would be at room temperature and water. Wipe caretaker and water. <laughs> yeah, you right. can't have snack. The water, water would be water frozen bottles. and the. That's right. So many babies had frozen uh, diaper wipe. Experiences yeah, from we got a wipe warmer actually, <laughs> just in case anything went wrong and uh -huh. we had to figure out how to use frozen wipes. Speaking of frozen, I feel like there's nothing that we would do that we wouldn't do to be able to make a Sunday happen. And Easter was one of those things for kids. Mm -hmm. And we had, this was in the day whenever petting zoos were actually a thing, like mm -hmm. where you could actually mm -hmm. find them. But on Easter, we had llamas 
from the actual petting zoo, and they were out there in like below freezing. Yeah, those are that was Easter 2018. It was about three months before, before we moved into the building. Yeah. And it was like because it snowed. On the Easter. llamas had icicles hanging off yeah, their nose. It snowed about six inches. Uh -huh. I didn't even know it was supposed to snow that day. Like I didn't know it snowed until I took the first case outside and was like. <laughs> How do I roll this case through snow that's like deeper than the wheel into the trailer? And then I look over and there's a petting zoo and they're all miserable and like yeah. nearly dead. The parents are like, go out quick and pet the llama. <laughs> and the and too, like today, like if, if there's weather for Easter, we're like, oh, this is nothing. It's like, we can't have yeah. Easter eggs outside in the natural grass. Let's naturally <laughs> create one inside a gym and throw Easter grass everywhere and just that. throw the eggs. And now I feel like that's kind of preferred. <laughs> Our people actually, we like the They're like, it's a, lot, it's a lot harder to get grass stains on your Easter dress mm -hmm. when you're on the turf. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well as far as portable goes, the, I think m most people have no idea what went into mm -hmm. setting up every morning. No. And then if, Play you, panels. if you got them a, yeah. like the setup team and you showed up at seven, I think at first you're like, we're going to do what in what amount of time? Mm -hmm. And especially with, like the cafe at Truman High School, that was, that was all the pipe and drape. You had to set up like water. It was a, an amazing amount of work. And yeah, I remember was. the first time I was part of the setup, I was like, why are we doing all of this? <laughs> it was a lot. And then you got to tear it all down afterwards. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but, but I remember great, the great care. Experience. Like, there was like a quality control team that would come through and it was the quality control was rarely the women so in the kids area it was like mark hagan logan porter and bill and they would be setting up mock play scenes in each of the kids rooms <laughs> so like with the building blocks they would create like little houses so that when the kids came in like something was like already ready to go oh, there was really? like such a care yes. that went into like what the kids were going to step into and it was mm -hmm. it was portable but i just was always i always appreciated everyone's i'm, I'm glad you mentioned logan because that reminds me of the story <laughs> that we were uh uh, that, oh that when we were talking about our first Christmas Eve service. Oh. Uh, Craig, do you want to you want to talk about that one? <laughs> yeah. So we had this idea of I feel like I get really expensive creative ideas, <laughs> and yet we have church planner budgets. So the idea was we were going to play this song, and it was all about like letting the light shine, and. It's like, oh, what a cool moment. We'll like challenge them to go out, be the light, because Christ is the light. And then in my mind, I was thinking like, probably I had just attended like the Coldplay concert with their like <laughs> multi-million dollar light setup. Uh -huh. And they had lots of haze and fog and there was, you know, these like streams of light. And so that was my mind. Like, there'd be like these beacons of light everywhere. And so we handed everyone a 30 cent keychain, uh -huh. keychain flashlight, <laughs> that uh -huh. we assumed would Same cut effect. through the, well, Same should have been haze. We could only afford like the $50 fog machine yeah, we had that they sold like a full on DJ like spirit Halloween. At your wedding. <laughs> so uh -huh. yeah. I remember I, poor Logan, I was like, Logan, you gotta fill up the entire room with fog <laughs> and like Fog is what you use like on the ground, not haze. And so this uh -huh. thick, billowing, ominous fog. <laughs> and I'm like in the middle of my prayer and the fog machine, because it was so cheap, it's like, and he's holding it down. <laughs> and and I told him, no matter sounded, what, yeah, it goes, don't let go. <laughs> yes. No. And then it like, and everyone like in oh, the prayer was like we put him up in the like in the rafters yeah because the rafters. like oh. and I told him no to, matter what to get don't the fog stop. in the air don't stop they keep going the building was on fire and oh. yeah people are worried that the building's on fire and but I was like no matter what anyone says don't stop and so he's like okay and Laura and so and everybody's freaking out yeah and they're like what is happening Laura and she runs up to the rafters and she's like. Logan, stop! He's like, no, Pastor Craig told me I couldn't! She's like, stop! And so the entire room fills up with smoke. Everyone thinks the theater's on fire. And then they pull out their keychains. And then they're doing, and it's done, doing nothing. It's like just, the, it creates a dull glow. I mean, yeah, the, the fog. They and they were like, yeah, 
Merry Christmas. All right. <laughs> We're not on fire. That's our gift to you. You'll live to see another day. Whose idea was it to throw the bread from the man from heaven? I was remembering I something mean, was thrown out from there. When you say whose idea was it, and it's a crazy thing that happened, uh, yeah. it's only really one the, person's the, idea. When they threw the, the bread, it was like a full slice of bread, and it would just yeah. smack people yeah. in the yeah. face. Yeah. We did do that on purpose. We thought that was funny. And then you could hear them laughing up there. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm yeah, that was uh, supposed to be. That made the twin sauce vlog. That was, that was twin oh, sauce. That was Paul and Luke. They were, they were very excited to climb up in the rafters. Where in that particular part of the rafters, yeah. you couldn't even see. You couldn't see yeah. if you were in the audience mm -hmm. looking. You couldn't see who was up there. Right. You just see loaves of bread. Yeah. So Craig's doing this sermon about manna and how amazing it is that it just shows up, and how we should be thankful for like God's gifts and things, mm -hmm. and and then you just get <laughs> just chucking slices. Yeah. <laughs> that was Sarah Lee smacks you right up across the face. I remember during our relationship series, you always had like these like band sets of these like love songs. Yeah, Those were cool. awesome. It was it was really fun in the season though, like because we really had kind of free reign to just pick whatever songs that we wanted. It was a Whitney Houston. <clears throat> we Natalie. did a Whitney Natalie's Houston once we were at the city house. And Somebody was not happy house. that we sang Whitney Houston in church. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whitney Houston playing hangs out with angels, so I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. the voice of an angel herself. I love those. Yeah. Yes. Just, <laughs> <laughs> they were. Uh, awesome. you know, I'm not sure Jordan misses those. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. I love them. Um, uh -huh. My favorite part was we sang. Um, we did George Michael. Uh, we did Careless Whisper oh, one Sunday, yeah. mm -hmm. and we had uh, a really that? lovely guy that was playing saxophone with us at the time. That was uh, he <laughs> was one of the most gifted musicians I've ever met in my life, but also maybe one of the um, least mm, responsible <laughs> people <laughs> I've ever met. So we so he showed up about an hour late to rehearsal and then but we got through first service and then second service is starting and he just was nowhere to be found um and so we were playing careless whisper which like hangs on the need of the saxophone mm -hmm. uh and then they just there was no saxophone it was it was fun it it's was so emphasis great. on the careless hey, yeah it was a very careless song. moment um that wasn't the only time that we didn't have a musician show up on the stage oh. no. easter sunday um, there was not, not that story, okay. um, which I'll let you awesome. tell the story if you want to. Oh, you. Uh, Easter Sunday at Truman, we had uh, another, another lovely, uh, gifted musician friend um, who was playing drums for us. Uh, and we were playing out a song at the end of the service. So, like, a really excited, like, uh, song is called um, It Is Finished, I think was the name of it or something. It was a Dustin Kinsey song. And so, we're on stage uh, getting ready to play the song and our drummer is nowhere to be found. And it's a big upbeat song like we have to have drums to I play it. the drummer this time. And it wasn't start. Craig. Uh, on the record. It was a sweet guy who had left during first service to go pick up his wife and daughter from their house. Um, and he did not make it back in time. Uh, oh my gosh. And so we're sitting there on the stage and I look and I catch Michael Jones's face and he's, he was, Michael Jones was the, the drummer that came to relieve Craig of his uh, mm -hmm. duties. Like I said, he was a very important part of our story in many ways. And I'm standing there on the stage and like, I'm, Craig is like closing out Easter Sunday for first service. And I catch Michael's, I'm just staring at Michael, like, look at me, just look at my face. <laughs> Here I am, just smi I'm smiling at you. And he's like looking at Craig, like, you know, just being at church next to his wife. And then he looks at me and he goes, because <laughs> I'm like staring at him. I'm like, I'm like, hey. And he's like, what's up? I'm like, drums over here. Can you come? He's like, huh? I'm like, come drums. And he's like, hmm? I'm like, yeah. And he's, he's like, so he gets up and he like wanders around because you can't just like walk up on the stage. You have to like walk all the way out of the auditorium and then run around to the backside and come back out on stage. And so about a minute later, he makes it to the drums. Uh, and he sits down and I go over to him and I was like, I have no idea where our drummer is. Uh, we're gonna play this song. There'll be a click track. It's in 6-4. All I need you to do is just count to six and play a beat. They don't need any fills. It'll be fine. He goes, okay. <laughs> and then we're like, we're like 30 seconds from the start of the song. And I'm like, you ready? He's like, 
Yep. And so it starts and he just goes, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, and plays that beat oh for gosh. three minutes while we finished this song and nobody knew any different. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's And he crazy. saved the day. I don't even think I do. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea. It was, like... a, it was a crisis. I don't think I've ever been as worried at a church service as I was in that moment. Not even as worried at that time that I was, um, I was late to the stage uh, one Sunday morning. Yeah, Jordan had. It happens. He, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. And that, this is why I'm like panic every Sunday morning with words that already found. I just found out was coming on because of like, Where are you? Yeah. No, he, uh, we were at Truman. And Jordan had tore his Achilles. I don't know if you guys remember the season I remember that. Of, of my You had the scooter. Yes, it was the scooter. He had a boom. I feel like everybody had With scooters. his scooter. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, service is about to get started. And countdown's going down. We've got the pre roll going. And like, I'm up on stage. The whole band's up on stage. And I'm just like looking around, like, where is he? Where is he? And he always likes to just like wait to the very last second because he likes to see you panic. I think. No, I was um, talking to people. Yeah, I, was, okay. you know, I was being. But this uh, is just typical for Jordan. He waits to the very last second before he can stroll out. Well, he wasn't. He wasn't nowhere to be found. And I was like, Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! And then the pre roll <laughs> dies down, and it's silence. And I'm just like sweating bullets. Like I'm about so, to cry. And then all of a sudden we hear. Rrr! To the side so, of the stage. So Truman had, if you remember, Truman had the backstage entrance where everybody walked in, and then right with the, like in front of the stage to the left, there were those side doors that nobody mm -hmm. used during service because they were really distracting. Yeah. But it was the fastest way to get mm -hmm. to the stage from the cafe, mm -hmm. where you go through that back mm -hmm. hallway and that yeah. way. And yes. so what had happened? I was on my knee scooter because I had a cast on my leg, and I was trying to negotiate the doors to get to the hallway by myself because countdown's going. And then I'm on my way back and I'm like, I gotta cut through this way. And so I turned and like fell basically <laughs> and caught myself uh, and then hopped back up onto my scooter as pre-roll was had ended. And so yeah, I opened those doors. It's just like dead silence. Uh -huh. Everyone was just looking. And Everybody then looks like, over is like, oh. Everyone's heads turn and then he's And then like, I'm just like, scoot, 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 scoot. <laughs> over like the speaker cables is like clunky. And everyone's and laughing. And he's wave like, at everybody. <laughs> everyone's just dying laughing. And then I uh, and then I got to my spot and proceeded to flip my scooter around and sit on the back of it and sit down with my cast sticking out and blood <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. One series that I remember the most though, I think because of my love for Jesus. Jesus and Justin Timberlake mm. was the 2020 experience. Mm, yeah. The mm. suit, and tie. suit and tie. Right. Yeah. Did you yeah. did we do that song? No. During it? No, there's no I just remember that was like our big well, like creative push. Yeah, I didn't want to yeah. do an injustice to <laughs> Justin Timberlake. <laughs> but okay, I think you were whenever we used to do our kids um Christmas songs. And it was just like a free for all. Like we thought that we could like have every child that ever wanted to, even like yeah. there were people, there were kids that for the very first time, I think it was even like Lars, <laughs> they would come to church to visit. That would be their very first time in kids. And they would go on stage. Yeah. So like, like, they'll be fine. Going. It'll be all fine. Just hold hands or they'll together. And so we had them in this back room. It was the back, like, audit, like the stage room, like the auditorium room. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. And then it was just like literally herding cattle so that the kids yeah. could come on for five minutes and be able to sing. And we were like, I hope this goes okay. And I remember little Zoe. Uh, Shinri's little mm. girl. The entire time, they were all crushed up on stage, just see, looking adorable. And Zoe, I thought that she was gonna go blind because she, the entire time she was just staring. Like we had those like LED, what are they? Like lights on the floor. Yeah. It was as if she just stuck the entire thing in her eye the entire time mm. and was like bent over. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, we're gonna have a kid mm. go blind over this. But there were was those, nothing we said no to. Were those those? Was that the, when we were having to use John Howe's ring lights for to light oh, up the speaker no, because Truman had done something and we didn't have stage yeah. lighting anymore? And so John, uh, being the blessing that he was, would bring his little photography ring lights, which are like you know now influencers get the little ring lights for shooting videos mm -hmm. and stuff, but these were like pretty big daddies. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he would put two of them up there, and it would illuminate the speaker enough that you could see them online and kind of in the room. But what it really did was kind of make them look like a ghost, which was pretty fun. If oh. you go back and search the interwebs, 
for some of those stories, everybody's kind of just a little blue tinted mm -hmm. because of the LED sharpness of it, and just the back is super dark, and that was a that was a fun season. But at least we had power. I remember I, what was it also Easter one year? I'm trying to remember when we started a song. Like service started and we were about a minute into one of the songs and then just power just shut off for the whole mm -hmm. auditorium and treatment. And then we just like didn't know when it was gonna come back on. And so we're just like hey, That was guys. the name of the game. Like you just never knew what would happen from mm -hmm. Sunday to Sunday. You would just like pivot. Sweep roaches off the floor oh, yeah. and yeah. off to the zone. Oh, my. <laughs> and so, what year was the first baptism outside? We that? had that oh, the, yeah. since the very beginning. Well, our very first baptism we had at Inglewood. Uh, yep. We oh, did. I remember, I remember that. They let us use their space, yeah, and really so we had it on like a Sunday night and had it in their sanctuary, um, which was awesome that they let us do that. And so that was really cool. But then after that, I think we were like, Want to do something like, like on for like after service, oh, or like where, where our people are, are there, and um, so we did have it outside at Truman. <laughs> and after <laughs> service, we we would tear yeah, down all of our band stuff and take it out there to just play like live. That music. was great. I yeah. love that. And, and everyone surrounded the Baptizzi. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Baptizzi. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that what, what you called, called it? I thought that's what you guys called it. Uh, yeah. I think that was I've just a phrase that was coined. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Maybe you've always said that in your mind. Maybe. Maybe. It's, it's, like, it's a business no, thing. Can we start calling it Baptizzi Sunday? Yes. But was the water yes. heated back then? Mm, that was what I was One time we paid. It's supposed to be. So. <laughs> One guy slept in his car all night and would keep checking on the water. Remember that? Uh -huh. Wow. wow. But sometimes crazy. we were baptizing and it would be, yeah, unheated water. It was and snowing outside. It was the spring ones. Oh, the March. The March that were always. Because you like. We didn't really do them in the wintertime because we were outside. And so we were like, March. Yeah. We can start doing them again. And you had all these people that cataloged wow. up from the winter months they're like ready to get baptized and so but it's the like, you still have the same one awesome. right we still use the same tank. It's, you could call it a tank. what it is is a it's a baptizzi uh, it's a baptizzi that's it i feel like that's, that's a dance that someone does <laughs> i remember i remember <laughs> it's yeah. i remember we bought that i went to a tractor supply company on 291 mm -hmm. 23rd street and was just like walking around like trying to measure all of their like trough things yeah. to figure out okay and i've had my like measurement this and so if we have this many people in there if somebody's like and like the tractor supply people like man this guy's really particular about like how many waters his how many, animals how he waters and feeds his animals and i'm just like <laughs> you know, so if that person lays back like this then they're Okay, that's probably too small. And people will hit their heads inevitably. But still apparently, works. it still happens. Oh. Clayton O'Neill got dunked and got a little extra oh. fast oh. from uh, Love You, Clayton. I feel like there's yeah. right, so there's three stories that I think of that are my favorite memories of our Truman days. Number one, and I'll allow him to go unnamed because this is somewhat of an incriminating story. There's a guy in our church who we were at Truman, and he was like with tears in his eyes, as genuine as possible. He's like, I just can't believe that like how redemptive God is. He's like in this room, because apparently, and we confirmed this, there is a, there was a hidden room. You remember this? In Truman. Oh, yeah. That uh, I don't know if it was like an architectural error, but behind one of the walls, if you crawled up under the stage, which we, the very last prayer meeting, we did. We crawled under the stage and crawled into this little hidden room and there was all mm -hmm. kinds of crazy stuff in there. Yep. He said he used to skip class, crawl up in the hidden room, smoke weed, during school. During school. Yeah, when he was a student. Back in like the 70s. Uh -huh. And now in the same theater, he was like, this is where I've like rededicated my life to God. Yeah. And I thought that was amazing. I love that. I think of the story when uh, my son Liam uh, went missing. I know, I knew this was a new There was an issue. Was panic. That panic. Terrible. <laughs> He had brought his Legos to church and been warned not to take his Legos and he got caught and got scared and decided that uh, he was going to hide behind the vending machine. And so everyone in family ministries is looking for Liam. There's a missing child. And he hasn't been a... checked in yet, just to let the record show. Right. We did not lose him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm about to walk out to speak and one of our guys whispers into my ear, Hey Craig, uh, <laughs> Liam's missing. Uh, 
but don't worry, we've got a whole squad of people looking on Nolan Road for him right now. I'm <laughs> sure he's gonna be fine. Road. And I was probably the right move would have been like, no, let's shut it down. Mm-hmm. But I was like, all right, he'll show up. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite. And you just really trusted our people. But you have to. Did you tell where he was found? He was yeah. behind the vending machine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I will say probably my favorite moment of all time was, and I hope Natalie sees this video. Mm -hmm. It was when Natalie, we had a message talking about uh, abortion Mm -hmm. and Natalie had the courage to share her story. And at the very end of that, we said, if anyone, like maybe you've walked through this, maybe you've had like, this has been like that, that area of shame and you've never shared this with anyone. Uh, and you just want to talk to Natalie, connect with her. And I thought like maybe one, maybe two women would, but like we're tearing down service. It had ended and there was a line of like 15 and 20 women, even crazy stories of like, there was one woman in particular who was driving, lived out of state and just so happened to swing by. She wanted to go to church somewhere and attended our church that day. And like, that was a part of her story. And like, just to see Natalie, like praying and crying with each one of these women after that was like unbelievable. It was like a life changing moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sermon stands out. I feel like baptisms were, because uh, I, I was in education for like 12 years, maybe not that long. I don't know, guys, I don't know time. But uh, it was baptisms because I had never been able to baptize anyone before. And it was a really big deal. I remember it was Sue Roberts. She wanted me to baptize her. Mm-hmm. And, um, that was just a really, it was, I think it was a special moment for her, obviously, but then for me too, that somebody, we hadn't just, it was, wasn't a part of the culture that I had been brought up in that you could just like, one, that I was a pastor and that two, I could, that I could be a part of someone's salvation story of baptizing them. And then I feel like baptism just always held, still do just a very special place just because of our people. We just get so excited. Our first baptism in the city house, uh, Jessalyn got to baptize her dad, mm. which is maybe one of our, maybe one of our favorite moments. I think yeah. we have baptized our two oldest kids too since then, but the, uh, the one with her dad was really special because part of the um, the thing that the Lord had put in our hearts uh, in wanting to move back and start the church was thinking about growing up here and all of our friends and families that had been a part of church or the Lord had played a role in their life, but they had just lost either the routine of Sunday morning or lost their faith or um, the, the priority of God being centered had left. And so we were, you know, thinking and praying about all these people that when we move back to Kansas City, we want to invite the church. We just we literally like, made a list too of like all of the people list. in our life that like who who needed a community and mm-hmm. needed to belong in in a church, a church family. Yeah, so that was that was a really special day to see everything that God had done in His life, mm-hmm. and then um, kind of at this yeah. come to fruition moment, um, baptizing Him and. Uh, and he got, we, he came up out of the water and just shot his arms straight up into the air. Yeah. And then Jess like, was like crying and just kind of like wiped his hair <laughs> out of his face. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, just like really kind of just sweet moment. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But then we had, you know, there were a lot of people on that list that, uh, that made their way to our church. At one point it felt like every new person that was a part of our church for a little while for showing up was connected to Jess from somewhere. It was a kind of an interesting season. Your cousin Ward. Yeah. Uh, Ward was a fun story when we were uh-huh. when we were starting this. Ward uh, is currently a really important part of our church. He's helping us with our IT and all of the technical things. But he wasn't going to be a part of our church initially. But when we moved back, we were trying to buy all of our audio equipment, and we had a really fun. Uh, well, this is a whole other story too. We had a fun meeting with a company that helps church plants get started. And we said, here's our budget. It's this much. They met up with us and said, okay, well, we'll, we'll take that and we'll, we'll build something out for you guys. And so we had our follow-up meeting and they presented us something that was double what we said our budget was. And we just laughed and we're like, okay, 
Thanks. Uh, but what they did was they let us keep the proposal, which had a line item of everything that we would need. And so we took that line item to Ward, uh, who was managing the guitar center in town. And we're like, hey, we have a very, we can't afford this stuff that they lined out, but what could you help us with? And he basically got us better stuff than what was on that list and everything that was on it for about $25,000 cheaper than what they were offering it to us. And then so that was a huge blessing. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest blessing was that Ward, we set up our first practice service and Ward comes, uh, he's like, I better come help you guys get it set up. And so we set it up and everything and we tear it down. He's like, I better come next week for launch Sunday just to make sure everything goes good. And then uh, I remember he was talking to the guy that was helping us train from Portable Church mm -hmm. and Ward made the comment. He's like, well, you guys are going to be paying attention because I'm not going to be here next week. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yep. And that was 10 years ago. And then, and then he's just ever, it's like ever since then, it's every week he's just said, well, I better come and make sure nothing goes wrong for 10 and, years. And now he has yeah. an office yeah. in the anime. Yeah. Yeah. So we just, we just, yeah, at some point he may be like the lead pastor of our church in like 20 years from now. It's all you, Ward. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. just kidding. He hates attention. So everybody, so uh, right now in this if moment, you see this is cringing. And you and you know Ward, give him a hug. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> see him He'll love that. Can we all in this moment turn just around? Stare yeah. So yeah, just clap for the guy. Hey. 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 That's not probably Ward. Not too loud. Not too loud for the audience. <laughs> but no matter how scrappy that it, like the portable days seemed. Cause there's a lot of things that there's that there's something every week there was something every week that we had to figure out how to get through and work through but i feel like a lot of people miss that because it was just so the grit you mentioned it was just so much teamwork and then by the time sunday all was over you feel like you did something way more than just like walk in a building and have church yeah i mean it was really interesting because especially like Bingham was a really like the dark ages of our church. It was the dark ages. But at the same time, it was like so important for us, like because we had, you know, what we would consider like our core. We were we were about five or six hundred people when we were at Truman and then we moved to Bingham. And our number actually dipped a little bit because we had several people that were like, this isn't the same. I'm not coming back. Let me know when you guys get into a building. I'll be back then. And we're like, that's that's fine. Uh, but like what we found over the year that we were at Bingham was that the, so like the core people we had was less than our total number of people that were in attendance on Sunday. But by the time we left Bingham, it felt like every single person that showed up was part of our core because that was such a hard season mm -hmm. where like we would show up and set up, uh, on the little tiny stage. We went from having a full on theater production stage, it's way too much space, to now we're on like this little, the, like the stage felt like it was about Take as big as this table. Classroom. Uh, and the ceiling was like directly above us, classroom. and the heat, mm -hmm. the, the the HVAC at Bingham was always the opposite of what it was supposed to be. So in the summertime, the heat would be on, and in the wintertime, the, the air conditioner would be on. Um, but there, we would have dudes that would come and they're setting up the stage, the screen, and all that stuff, and they were just bringing an extra change of clothes because they know that by the time we get done with set they're gonna be so sweaty and gross, but they just have to go change for church. Mm -hmm. And it was just, but the commitment level in the, um, man, I just, we couldn't have done that without those guys. And then, but what that did is it helped us transition into this building that um, was such a massive undertaking that without those same, that same kind of buy-in from those people wouldn't have been a thing. So we're talking about the city house and just the very thought that we're even in the city house. It seems so normal now. We just keep showing up and it's like just our home, but like it's a, a miracle that we ever got that booming at the time. I remember we had like hired a, a consultant, Chris Willer, and he was helping us do something that many people in the church probably remember build this house. It was like a really important kind of a pivotal marking the next season and we were trying to accomplish all these different things and I can't even remember the amount of money we were trying to raise. It was over a million dollars that we had to raise to get into the city house. We were a church of around 500 people. Um, our budget was not very large. It was mostly young families 
And I remember one moment in particular where we're sitting in the office and Chris is, and he's, he's used to working with massive churches with multi-million dollar budgets and we're nowhere near that. And he was like, in order to hit this number, you need at least two people that can come up and commit to give a hundred thousand dollars a piece. And I just started laughing. I was like, Chris, you don't understand. Like those people don't attend our church. And so basically, and that was back in when we stayed in the innovation center, we office out of there and we had one large open office. I'm having this conversation with him on one side. And essentially I'm complaining about like, we just don't have the, the financial capacity to get into this building. And unbeknownst to me, there's a volunteer, an unemployed volunteer on the other side of the office, assembling what we used to call uh, growth track packets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's like overhearing this conversation. So fast forward two weeks, we had a prayer meeting on a Saturday morning there at Truman High School, and it was a really powerful time. And afterwards, she comes up to me and she's like, hey, in order for us, because that was right when we had found what used to be the flea mart, now is the city house. Mm -hmm. We found this building, it had just gone on the market. We really felt like, oh my gosh, this is the one. This is our building. This is the one the Lord has for us. But because we were so young, the bank required 20% yeah. in cash. So we had to come up with hundreds of thousands of dollars and we had been saving for years. Mm -hmm. But I remember her asking me, how much do we still need to make the down payment? And I said, we still need $200,000, we're that short. And she just started like bawling. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what's going on? And she said, long story short, her mother had just died and she was the executor of her mother's estate and her mother before she passed said i want my inheritance to go towards building the kingdom of god and i feel like god's telling me that i need to give her inheritance to the church i was like so i mean i'm asking the obvious question how much is your mom's inheritance and she said two hundred thousand yeah. dollars and i remember that day it was our big gift sunday that she came forward and gave that check for two hundred thousand dollars it has so it will, well, maybe not forever, but it has easily been the largest one-time gift ever. And maybe and one of the most important. We would not have done it. Like that was when I knew God was gonna do something really extraordinary through the facility and through our church in this next season, because it was a miracle. It is a miracle we got it. It's really fascinating to think about that act of obedience from her set the course for it every story of life change that's happened since. Yeah. All of the people that have come to know Jesus, all the people who have been pulled out of addiction, pulled their marriages have been restored, all the people that have that have found ways to cultivate character and capture the calling and become a disciple of Jesus. Churches planted. Churches planted leaders from, built. Like, from that one person being obedient yeah. is, it's remarkable. But that's just the Lord and how he works, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it was just, you know, we went through the pandemic and it felt like uh, there's like these different reset moments in the life of your church. But like for us, we spent four years and then we went to the Bingham and it was like a little bit of a reset. And then you went into the city house, Mother's Day 2018, it was a reset. And then you go through the pandemic and it's like another reset. And it's like the Lord's been kind of like building us up to this moment uh, where I really feel like we spent probably eight years trying to figure out who we are. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it was actually in the pandemic, we were like, oh, this is us. Because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of courage, especially when you play in a church in your 20s and your early 30s. Like, it just takes time to realize like what type of church is God calling us to be. And so for me, as grateful as I am for the stories of the past and kind of the, the sacrifice of what led us to this moment, I really do believe like this next season of what he's leading us into and we see the the God stories emerging, like the true life transformations, um, people discovering. And that's the thing that Jeremy has been talking about. The thing we didn't realize is that we were, we were frustrated. Why aren't more people engaging? Why aren't more people wanting to pursue discipleship. And I think you assume that it's because they are unwilling or they don't want to, but what we realize is because they didn't believe they were worthy. Mm 
Mm. They didn't think God could use someone like them. And I think what we're discovering now is like through this new process of pursuing discipleship, character and calling is we're helping people understand that you are worthy. Mm-hmm. And that's life changing. That's like, and that's another one of my favorite stories. And it's represented at this table is that Jeremy's here because of what the Lord did in his heart through our desire to pursue or our, not our desire, but our listening to the Lord telling us, hey, pursue discipleship above everything else and that's like and that's how you're here now i mean you have been a part of our church since the very beginning that's yeah it was the beginning i I remember the first time i came my wife and i carrie we just felt something that we felt like god's doing something here we didn't know what it was at the time we just knew that we wanted to be a part of it it was like wow we get this is exciting and we get to be a part of something and fast forward to where we are now man I, so many people got used. Not the Church of the Four Corners as a whole, but also just all the individual people that he used to transform the way that I see myself as a Jesus follower. Because like Craig was talking about, people don't think that they're worthy. And once that um, you get past that through the way that, through God's revelation and you see that you are worthy and you have a plan in this um, world, uh, it just it changes you. Um, I, that, I've, I get to see that over and over again with people that come to our church. That God brings people to our church that He wants them to be able to see that for themselves also. I'm excited seeing that through the lens of our kids because this is like we're now like 10 years in, and now our kids that have were here at the very beginning of the church. Babies. They're babies. And now they're, a lot of them are in upper elementary and youth and they love the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's just so neat to be able to see what God's doing in their lives and how that's just kind of creating like a trickle effect to other people. And that for me is the hope that um, the kids that started out in portable, <laughs> like the kids that like, well, have been here since the very beginning, just kind of seeing their relationship with the Lord grow and they've been through all of the stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's neat to be able to, to see as more kids and students kind of continue that journey too. But I don't know. I, I get really, I'm so hopeful for what God's going to do even in the next 10 years, because I feel like the students and the kids that are a part of our church right now are just going to do phenomenal things. And they already are. Mm-hmm. Already taking over all mm-hmm. of the kids' wings, <laughs> yeah. which is yes. great. They want to help in all sorts of different ways. Yes. Yeah, I didn't have any kids. I trained yeah. for kids' crew. Mm-hmm. Trainee's like first. super mom. She'll like wow. <laughs> carry a baby, be holstering a baby on her back, hold one on her foot. <laughs> like, I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> Give birth in the middle of a certain <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing that hasn't happened. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, another 10. 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 The words of Wally. <laughs> clink. I feel like now we should clink. Let's clink. So we're we're clink. We're clinking okay. it. Okay. Hey, you gotta give it a clink. <laughs> And I feel like I have to clink with everyone or it's bad. That's going to sound terrible on the video. (laughs) (laughs) Will we do a silent?